The SGC 2020 is a collectible QRPHF transceiver made in USA. Did you copy the Kilo Kilo 4 Whiskey Whiskey? Okay, let me do Kilo Kilo 4 Whiskey Whiskey, you're 59 Oregon, Marion County, Oregon. Yeah, well, we're, you're 59 in <clears throat> Floyd County, Virginia. We grew up in Salem out there. What part of Marion County are you in over? Oh, great, great. Well, we're graduate of South Salem High School, 57, graduate of Oregon State, 63. QSL? Hey, wow. Well, uh, now, let's see. I was at North Salem High School, 57, okay? Hey, wow. Well, we got a lot in common there. Name here is Dave, and we, we grew up out in Four Corners, over. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Dave, uh, uh, what is your last name? Larson. L-A-R-S-E-N, Larson. Uh, give me that again. Yeah, Tom Meyer, Tom Meyer, the skinny kid with a crew cut. Oh, yeah, I do remember the name, Tom. I sure do. And we were out there to the 50th reunion for the uh, South Salem, and we'll be back out there for the 55th. Over. Okay, good to see you, Dave. That's uh, really something. I'll tell, uh, like, uh, Bob Schaefer, I know, would like to know we talked, okay? QSL, bye. Now, if you don't want to operate QRP with this radio, we did modify the radio to have a little keying circuit. So we could key it and drive this uh, Ameritron amplifier. Test one, two, three, four. This is uh, N4 USA. N4 USA. Uh, testing one, two, three, four. N4 USA is clear. You sounded wonderful. Um, uh, what are you running over there? Go ahead. Well, we're running an uh, SGC 2020. SGC 2020. And uh, let me uh, let me do something here. Okay, we're running barefoot there now. One, two, three, four. Um, how's the copy there now, Dave? Well, you were like a plus 20, now you're like around a 5.9. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, we're on 20 watts now, 20 watts, 20 watts. And I'm turning the amp on now. Okay, you got the amp on. I use the SG, uh, uh, ALS 500 Ameritron, probably running about 350 watts. The SGC 2020 is a very interesting and very easy to use radio. When you turn it on, it gives you the serial number and the incoming voltage so you know uh, what you've got to operate with. The controls are quite simple uh, and it has a lot of internal features. It has a built-in CW operation uh, with just a plain key or a iambic key, speed control, uh, bandpass filter, noise blanker, uh, of course it has split and receiver incremental tuning and a fast and slow uh, tuning and a bandwidth control from about uh, 2.7 uh, kilohertz down to very very narrow for CW and of course reverse uh, to see a reverse channel. Well, th thank you Don. I did hear uh, J, uh, 8R1WD in there, and J73JT, yeah, I hope uh, we can pick you up a little better in just a few minutes. It's good having you in there. 8R1WD, how are things in Georgetown this morning? Over. Okay, good morning, Dave. Good morning, Don, and all the sun frequency. We're fine. Um, it's May, and we have sunshine. <laughs> so, once that happens, we have to be happy because May, June is the second uh, the radiant period of the, of the year. Your signal's doing pretty well up here now, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. Over. So, Roger, Roger, Roger. Thank you very much for the request, and um, uh, it was nice talking to you all, and um, have a wonderful Sunday and all the best, and we'll be looking forward to talking to you on Tuesday night as well. Okay, Joseph. Well, that was a good transmission that time. We copied uh, really well. So, uh, again, tell our friends there in Castle Bruce, uh, Dominica, good morning and hello for us. Well, we've taken the unit out of the case. <clears throat> to show you the construction, it's surface mount technology. And, you know, it's very nicely done. See some little surface mount parts over here capacitors and resistors in here and of course some ICs on the surface mount.
and this is of course a fully microprocessor operated system. Well, the unit comes in a nice case. In fact, the picture on the front of the case is larger than the unit itself. And the case of the collector's out of my head. Another one I threw away, or the box, the shipping box. I wish I'd have saved it. Um, it's got lots of information. Yeah, the other end of the box has a complete specifications of the radio. All the specs. Specifications of the receiver. And the transmitter. Thanks for uh, Louisiana. If you need a car, just send it to the to the headquarters here, and, and the staff will get you a car. N4 USA. Thank you. Uh, N4 uh, USA, uh, 59 Hartford County, Connecticut. Oh, thank you. This is N4 USA. We're Foundation for Amateur International Radio Service, uh, Floyd County, Virginia. Name is Dave. Thank you very much for the contact there with headquarters. Thank you very much, and a nice call there. Okay, yeah, you're 5'9", Floyd County, Virginia. Thank you. Well, just in summarizing the, the radio, we're still listening here at ARRL, uh, working the contest, uh, W1AW. Uh, the radio is a great little radio. It's a great collectible radio. Uh, it's not made anymore. Uh, it's, uh, as an operational radio, it's only average, but it has some really neat features. It's small, it's QRP, plus runs up to 20 watts, and a little mod, you can drive an amplifier with it. And, um, you know, it has a DSP, all the nice features you'd expect, and uh, built very solidly. And uh, more than a novelty radio, this is a good radio. We've used this on some expeditions. And like I said, it's not a high quality receiver in terms of sensitivity, but it's a good little CW rig, good uh, sideband rig, and uh, just a nice little radio, and it's certainly a very novel, a good novelty collectible radio, but a very functional radio as well. I've certainly enjoyed making this video on the SGC 2020. It's one of my personal transceivers. I purchased it many years ago at the Dayton Hamvention, direct from the manufacturer when it first became available. And if you enjoy uh, HF radios, enjoy unusual HF radios, using them and collecting them, you'll enjoy this. Thank you for watching our video. Have a great day.